Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about Pokemon Reborn and sort of the rap it gets for being quote unquote edgy and you know understand that I by no means am discouraging criticism of the game or think that there's nothing wrong with the Pokemon Reborn just because I happen to like it. Um, I mean literally the last video I did was on the subject of being able to criticize Pokemon Let's Go and uh, likewise, Pokemon Reborn definitely has its issues, both in story and gameplay, but particularly with the former, I feel like the uh, quote-unquote edginess of the plot and characters isn't entirely due to Amethyst's fault as a writer, uh, and more so the circumstances surrounding the premise of the entire project, and if that doesn't make sense to you, then, well, that's what I'm here to explain. So, hopefully it makes a little bit more sense to you once you're done with this video. But yeah, a common accusation that this game gets is that it's trying too hard, or it's being edgy. And edgy is one of those terms that's kind of hard to pin down a real definition for these days. Sort of like the term cringe as well. Um, but generally, it's kind of associated with, like, excessive grittiness, which, you know, Pokemon Reborn is definitely gritty, or heavy-handed cynicism displayed by some of the characters. That can definitely be viewed as edginess to some people, and it probably accounts for more of the edginess in this game than people realize. And in the case of Pokemon Reborn, I definitely think that, for the most part, it's the characters driving this perception and you know the characters drive the plot anyway so if the characters come off as edgy then the plot's gonna come off as edgy naturally florinia amaria titania lynn luna aya these are just a handful of characters off the top of my head that i would fault no one for finding them too edgy or otherwise off-putting and grating especially when they're all in the same game and the thing is, this is sort of a self-inflicted shackle that has existed since the inception of Pokemon Reborn because, well, first of all, Amethyst has stated numerous times, originally Pokemon Reborn was going to be a really short project, it was never really meant to go the distance, and when it did, it was stuck with the premise of the project being an homage to basically glorified role players that Amethyst used to work with when running the actual Pokemon Reborn League. You really gotta take into account the time period for this too, because this league was born in an era where Wi-Fi battling was genuinely a new thing that just now existed in the Diamond Pearl Platinum days, and continued into the fifth generation before it was discontinued. And I mean, this was during the golden age of internet forums, and that's why the Pokemon Reborn forums are here to this day and are not just some Facebook group or something. I mean, we're talking like the mid-2000s when uh, all of this was going down. So that's when you got to take into account that a lot of the characters in this game, most of them, pretty much all of the gym leaders and a few of the other characters like Sigmund Kano, Lin, uh, <laughs> who else? Fern, Kane, all of them. All of their characters are based off of role players in an internet forum from the mid 2000s i mean when you put it in that context it's sort of a wonder that the game isn't even more edgy so it's like imagine if you role played your own oc in the mid 2000s and then somebody five years later tried to make a character out of that yeah and characters drive the story and 70% of these characters are those OCs from the mid-2000s. And basically what I'm saying is that Amethyst is doing her best with what she's got. Now, to be fair, it's not like Amethyst couldn't have made the decision to tweak the characters and change them up in order to be more palatable, but then that would sort of betray the entire premise of the project, now wouldn't it? Which is to be an homage to the were born league gym leaders and everyone who participated in the original league, you know, the community, so to speak. That's who this game was for to, be, to begin with. And so far, she's definitely stuck to her guns in terms of making these characters as faithful to how they were in the league as possible. And that's why I say stuff like, the writing isn't entirely Amethyst's fault. That's not to say that Amethyst wouldn't have aimed for a more gritty and dark Pokemon game, 
even without these characters, given that back when Pokemon Reborn started, that was still a genuinely novel idea. But rather that I don't think characters like Titania or Amaria, for example, are very good metrics for the quality of Amethyst writing and what she is capable of doing. But for a better metric of what Amethyst is capable of pulling off, let's look at some of the actual original characters in the game. The ones that are not based off of anybody in real life. So a lot of Team Meteor, like almost the entirety of it except for Lin, uh, those are all original characters. So let's go ahead and uh, examine a few of them and see just how edgy they actually are. So let's start with Solaris. This guy, I'm actually a pretty big fan of this guy. He's this older gentleman, sort of a old-fashioned idealist. And for a lot of the game, he represents the big boss of Team Meteor. In fact, for a good portion of the game, you're really not aware that anybody is above him. Now, he's pretty ruthless and brutal in the game, but he also has this sort of Saturday morning cartoon villain vibe about him. Given that in one scenario, he literally opens a trapdoor under you, in front of him. That's just, I mean, that's that, that's pretty silly. I don't think that's quite in the category of edgy or brooding. And he sort of gets characterized as this guy who had the best of intentions, but went down the wrong path eventually, and was also corrupted by Lin, I guess. So in that sort of way, he really does remind me of an archetypical main series Pokemon game villain. In fact, I'm pretty sure he uses Giovanni's sprite. Um, that's pretty easy to see. And now he does have a sort of tropey, tragic backstory going on, but that's not something that's ever highlighted in the game. That's something that you have to like actively go out, uh, out of your way to look for. So yeah, I'm not really seeing the edge of this guy considering that he's one of the most archetypal villains of the entire game. So we're going to move on from him. I'm also going to give Zell basically a complete pass because we've barely gotten any characterization for Lumi and Eve since they just showed up. And Zero going crazy, I wouldn't really call that an edgy plot point since it's pretty justified. I mean, this man had his consciousness invaded by two other people. And had his body fucking snatched. He had to live as three people in one. Um, and it's actually kind of like a little cool plot thread where it kind of becomes a source of both his insanity and insecurity. Because you see, the really clever thing about Zell's story is that the actual part of Zell that was a team meteor grunt before merging into three people, a zero, uh, he was kind of a bitch before becoming Zell. Like, he was stated to be, like, the lowliest of the lowest meteor grunts, the most average, just kind of a nobody, uh, a, a peon. And then when he became Zell, when he had this terrifying fucking awful thing happen to him, having his body invaded by two other people's consciousness, when that happened to him, that's when he started to rise through the ranks. And now he's just back to being Zero again. So, from one standpoint, he's free from his fucking curse that he's been living with for who knows how long and now but now the insecurity starts to set in now the inferiority complex sets in because now you're just an average joe again and bennett is obviously exploiting that in the recent story so that's what really elevated zell for me um from where he used to be where i kind of just didn't care about him and also i, I really just can't remember what zell was like earlier in the game, like in the beginning parts when he was a big factor or a much larger factor than now. Um, so yeah, I, I just kind of give him a pass. He's not that big of a deal. Nobody cares. And then we get to one of my favorite characters in the game and honestly a top three or top two character in, in the game period. Fucking Taka. And the thing about Taka that impresses me so much and kind of, you know, is sort of the proof of concept for everything I'm saying here, he's like the exact opposite of Edgy. He is such a huge contrast for most characters in the game. It makes him so enjoyable and refreshing. Even if he does represent sort of an overused trope, but I think it's, it's one of those tropes that if you use it, I'm going to let it slide most of the time. Because if you're going to choose any trope to pick, I don't think the conflicted antagonist one is a bad one to choose. And I really could go on and on about everything that makes Taco so good, 
but I think that would warrant its own video, but I can just tell you that Taka is one of the most universally loved characters in the community, and he's Amethyst original. So, like I said, proof of concept, there we go. Um, I think that's it for today. Um, I, I could name some other minor characters, like, uh, <laughs> like fucking Aster and Eclipse, like nobody gives a shit about them. Hell, if I don't think people are gonna give a shit about Zell, they're not gonna give a shit about Aster or like Eclipse or Simon, Terra, none of them. I mean, Terra's not even a character, you don't meet her, she's dead. Uh, that's part of Simon's story. Um, and the thing is, like, now that I'm thinking about it, even Team Meteor has so many characters that are, like, um, based on gym leaders still. Like, Blake, Terra, Fern, they're all still, you know, not technically Amethyst original. There's, there's actually very few characters in this game that I can 100% say are, like, original to the game. Uh, I already covered, like, the primary ones just now. Even Elias, who was kind of transformed into an interesting character for this game, is based on a gym leader, a normal-type gym leader. So I can't even use him as an example, even though I think he's a pretty decent character in the context of this game. Okay, no, hold on, hold on. I did forget about somebody. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about Sirius. Oh my god, I think he's- isn't he literally the first Team Meteor admin that you meet? I'm pretty sure he is. Um, and I'm not memeing here, like, I'm not joking, I really did forget about him. And, um, yeah, that's for good reason. Sirius, he- he kinda sucks, like, I- I just don't like him. I would say I don't like his character, but I almost don't even feel like he has a, a distinctive character, especially compared to the other three that I named earlier. So, I mean, you can't win them all there. I wouldn't say that Sirius does, like, anything especially wrong with his character. Like, that's the thing. He doesn't really contribute or detract anything from the story. Um, that's the only real point I would make. I'm sure there's a bunch of characters that people would be more annoyed by than Sirius. He, Sirius is just sort of there... Uh, he's there to push the plot along in some aspects, like with Cory and all of that, which, I mean, that kind of begs the question why Solaris couldn't have done all that shit. Because Solaris is just a better version of Sirius in every way, but I digress. Amethyst is still 3 for 4, and to get an even better impression of, you know, how edgy Amethyst really is, you know, the creator of the game, we can just see how she expresses herself on Twitter. We can just check that out and see if that... Uh, supports my case even further. Go. I'm just, I, I, I'm trying to get on, man. I'm hungry. You hungry? You trying to eat? You're not going to eat like that? You know what? Just forget everything I said. I'm ending this video.